Elastic Stable Intramedullary Nailing, or ESSEN, of shaft fractures in children. With the Titanium Elastic Nail System, in short 10. ESSEN is a minimally invasive, minimally traumatizing, stable under movement and under partial load-bearing, biological and child-friendly osteosynthesis. Essen is used for the treatment in children of transverse, oblique, and short spiral shaft fractures using elastic titanium nails. This presentation provides information on the properties of the nails, the biomechanics of Essen, and the instruments for the TEN system. In the exercise, the standard ascending technique and the descending technique on the femur are demonstrated. The properties of the nails. The nails are available in diameters of 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and 4 millimeters. All the nails are 44 centimeters long. The tips of the nails are bent according to their diameter. This makes it easier to insert the nail and allows it to slide better on the inside of the bone. The tip of the nail also serves to indirectly reduce the fracture. The marking on the end of the nail helps to direct the tip within the bone without the need for checking under the image intensifier. The biomechanical principle of Essen is based on the symmetrical bracing of two elastic nails inserted into the metaphysis. Each nail must be supported at three points in the bone. This leads to the following three biomechanical properties which are presented in the model. The first is axial stability. The second biomechanical property is translational stability. And the third is rotational stability. The indications are determined by the patient's age, the type of fracture, and the fracture site. All three influencing factors must be considered together. For optimal insertion of the nail, the following instruments are provided. An awl with a sharp tip, or the standard instruments, consisting of the 2.7, 3.2 and 4.5 millimeter drill bits with the double drill guide and an inserter with a pin wrench. The tip of the nail is aligned so that it comes to rest in the same axis as the asymmetrical T piece. The additional markings on the chuck and the asymmetrical T piece serve for orientation of the rotation of the nail. Hammer blows on the T piece must be avoided. The laser marking on the end of the nail indicates nail tip and also serves for better orientation. If a hammer is needed or if the nail has to be moved back and forth in a targeted manner to reduce the fracture, a hammer guide and a combined hammer are provided. As an alternative, a long inserter with the spanner wrench and the slotted hammer are available. To make the reduction somewhat easier, the small radiolucent F tool is available. It can be adjusted to the thickness of the leg. The extraction pliers are used to remove the nail. During this process, the hammer blows are applied to the cam intended for this purpose or the guide rod is screwed on and the slotted part of the combined hammer is used. To shorten the nail, the cutting instrument is provided. Care must be taken to ensure that the correct opening is used, which corresponds to the proposed nail diameter. The beveled impactor on the right is provided for the definitive placement of the nail. 
When the special cutting instrument is not available, the standard bolt cutter can be used. It must be noted that with this cutter, the nail has to be cut outside the wound so as not to damage the soft tissue. The surgical technique is to be carried out with the example of a fracture of the femoral shaft using the standard ascending technique. For variations of this application, the surgical technique brochure is available. Preoperative rotation testing on the uninjured leg helps plan the correct rotational adjustment of the fracture before the nails are placed. With transverse fractures, it's particularly recommended to work on the extension table. Preliminary reduction is carried out under the image intensifier. It should be positioned so that even with a sterile covering, it allows radioscopy of the whole leg. The isthmus of the medullary cavity is measured on the X-ray image. The diameter of the individual nails should be 30 to 40 percent of the diameter of the medullary cavity. Nails with identical diameters must be used. For the ascending technique on the femur, the insertion points are 1 to 2 centimeters proximal to the distal epiphyseal plate. In children, this is about the width of one finger proximal to the upper pole of the patella. The intended insertion points should be checked under the image intensifier. The skin incisions are made at the planned insertion points. They run distally for 3 to 4 centimeters, depending on the size of the child. At the proximal end of the incision, the awl is inserted vertically down to the bone in the midline of the femoral axis. With rotating movements, a center mark is made. In the same way, the awl is lowered down to an angle of 45 degrees in relation to the shaft axis, and the perforation of the bone is continued at an upward angle. The position and the depth of the awl are checked under the image intensifier. Using another technique, the medullary cavity can be opened with the appropriate drill bit and drill guide. The drill bit may be lowered by an angle of 45 degrees only when the drill is running, otherwise the tip could break. The nail should be pre-bent only along the length of the bone, that is, from the greater trochanter to the distal plate. It is recommended to pre-bend the part of the nail that is to be implanted to three times the diameter of the medullary cavity. The vertex of the arch should be located at the level of the fracture zone. The tip of the nail must form the continuation of the arch. In principle, the two nails are pre-bent in the same way. The first nail is inserted into the medullary cavity with the tip at right angles to the bone shaft. The nail is turned through 180 degrees with the inserter. The tip of the nail is aligned with the axis of the medullary cavity. If necessary, the position of the tip of the nail is checked under the image intensifier. The nail is advanced into the medullary cavity manually, either using rotating movements or with gentle taps of the combined hammer against the striking surface of the inserter. The T-piece must not be struck. If necessary, the nail can be further tightened in the inserter with the pin wrench. The nail is advanced as far as the fracture zone. The inserter is loosened with the pin wrench. At the opposing insertion point, the medullary cavity is opened in the same manner. A nail of the identical diameter and pre-bent in the same way is inserted into the metaphysis, here shown with the long inserter. The alignment of the tip of the nail parallel to the axis of the medullary cavity can be clearly seen. The second nail is advanced to the fracture zone. If insufficient reduction is achieved, especially in the case of transverse fractures, the distal fragment can be manipulated and accurately reduced with the help of the protruding nails using the so-called joystick technique. 
The movement of the distal fragment can be clearly seen in the detailed view. If this maneuver does not result in an acceptable reduction, the small F tool may be used. If for some reason this reduction process is not good enough to allow the nail to be advanced, a small incision must be made and an open reduction performed. When the two medullary cavities are aligned correctly, the nails are advanced alternately across the fracture zone with gentle tapping or rotating movements. They have to progress far enough for the main fragments to be held securely, so the fracture is definitively reduced indirectly by the nails themselves. The nails are then advanced alternately to just short of the metaphysis. Here, care should be taken to ensure that in the proximal fragment, the tips of the nails are correctly aligned in the frontal plane. In case of uncertainty, this alignment must be checked using the image intensifier. At this stage, the rotation is also checked and, if necessary, adjusted. Adjustment will no longer be possible after fixation in the metaphysis. With the nails in this position, it's recommended to shorten them to the required length using the cutting instrument. The end to cut is inserted through the appropriate marked opening in the cutter sleeve. Care must be taken to ensure that after the final position is reached, the ends of the nails do not protrude too far. Using the beveled impactor, the nails are brought into the planned anchorage position in the proximal metaphysis with gentle hammer blows. In this process, the beveled part of the impactor must reach the cortical bone. This position guarantees a projection of about one centimeter. At the same time, the ends are bent slightly upwards to make it easier to remove the nail later. Positioned in this way, the ends of the nails lie securely under the iliotibial tract, indicated here with the pointer, and allow free movement of the knee. Correct anchorage of the tips of the nails in the metaphysis is essential for perfect stability. It's recommended to leak fractures, to check the stability by axial blows against the knee and to avoid distractions. The ends of the nails must not become loose. At the end of the operation, the rotation must be checked under anesthesia by comparison with the uninjured leg. The post-operative x-rays show anatomical reduction appropriate for a child. They also show that the nails have been positioned correctly with good distal and proximal anchorage. Full load bearing was achieved six weeks after the operation. Four months after the operation, with callus still present, extensive bone healing is apparent. The removal of the nails, as shown here, is the same for all fractures treated with the TEN system. Irrespective of the type of fracture treated, the nails should not be removed until four to six months following the operation. After the old incision has been opened, the end of the nail is exposed and held with the extraction pliers. The end of the nail should first be bent so that it is lifted clear of the callus that has formed. With the hammer guide firmly screwed onto the extraction pliers, the nail can be easily removed with strong axial blows along the guide. The bend at the end of the nail can be clearly seen. For fractures of the distal third of the femur or of the distal metaphysis, it's preferable to use the descending monolateral technique. From here on, only the variations from the standard technique are shown. The insertion points for the nails are located anterolaterally below the trochanter, about 1 to 2 centimeters from each other lengthways, and 0 0.5 to 1 centimeter from each other transversely. If the insertion points are too close to one another, the bone could split when the nails are inserted. The nail, which is pre-bent, especially at the tip, is inserted. The fracture may be reduced and primarily stabilized with the nail. The second nail, slightly pre-bent to an S-shape, is inserted and advanced up to the fracture. After it first makes contact with the opposing cortical bone or reaches the level of the fracture, the nail is turned through 180 degrees. The S-shape ensures that the nails are braced within the medullary cavity and that the tips of the nails are correctly positioned. 
By additional bending of the nail, the bracing effect can be increased even more. The second nail is then advanced through the fracture, and both nails are anchored deep in the metaphysis. A single perforation of the plate does not cause any damage. The post-operative x-rays show adequate reduction of the fracture appropriate to the age of the patient and correct axial positioning. It's clear that there is good anchorage of the tips of the nails through the epiphysis. Consolidation was complete four months after the operation. Full load-bearing was achieved after six weeks.